Maybe you're facing a challenge that you're having a really difficult time to overcome, or you're just thinking, hey, I think there's a better way to do this thing I want to do in Bubble, but if only I could just tell the AI what I want and then have it do that thing and then give me back the result, then your life would be so much better. Well, in this video, you're going to learn how to do just that. Let's take a look at what it is we're gonna cover here. You're gonna learn how to acquire some AI coding superpowers that you can use in Bubble. So we're basically gonna take you know, code that you've generated over in the uh, an AI tool, and we're gonna bring it into Bubble, but we're gonna see, because the challenge right now with any code that's generated is what do you do with it? How do you actually make it work for you inside of an actual app? Because there's infrastructure that's underneath the uh, code that actually kind of helps it run. And since we're working in the no code tool bubble, we are going to learn how that infrastructure works to support the code that you'll be ge get generated. So. Uh, let's take a look at our outline here. We are going to look at uh, some examples. Well, here are some examples of how AI JavaScript superpowers could be utilized in your app. So you could have some data transformation that would otherwise be really cumbersome to build into workflows and loops and all these types of things. If you just had some, uh, you know, code that was told, hey, do it. This is how I want it to be done. Um, that you know can be a much quicker path, even if you could still potentially do that in Bubble. Uh, next, third-party API integrations, another one that you can do in Bubble, but if you just take the docs and you take your API key and you take, uh, by docs, I mean the documentation of whatever API you're working with, and then you uh, tell the, the, um, the tool what it is that you want to uh, call and get back, well, you can you could do it for something like that. Google Analytics event tracking by Element ID. Uh, if you're familiar with the ID attribute, it's an option under General Settings uh, where you can expose the at ID attribute on each of the elements inside a bubble, the visual elements. So that way we can uh, put in by the element ID, okay, this is this button, this is this thing, right? And then we could work and get some JavaScript that says, hey, when this thing is clicked, send this event back over to Google Analytics because I'd like to track that and see how my app is doing. So that's another one and then a whole lot more. Um, in fact, the challenge of this particular video is that there's such a wide array of use cases that um, it's kind of difficult. So because of that, actually, I've gone ahead and created a rough framework that basically anyone, no matter what it is that you're trying to accomplish here, this is the steps that you're going to follow. You're going to have some bubble and that's going to be your data or in, in bubble, you're going to have data input. JavaScript, that's going to do the transformation, be it some AI code. And then you're going to have in bubble, in bubble, uh, missing a B, the data output. And then, so another way to think about this is what data do you have? What needs to happen to that data? And that's where you just tell the uh, AI with, um, you know, your natural English language uh, or, you know, whatever language you would prefer. But I think that these systems maybe code best in English. I'm not sure. Um, this is an English speaking channel, but we, I know we get people from around the world. Uh, but that's so anyways. Um, and then what does bubble get back from whatever happens here? And because we're working side in the, the bubble environment, um, we're going to learn basically this uh, number two here, part C. We're going to learn uh, how to give the AI basically all the stuff that you would need to make it happen. And the last thing I'll say is that I spent 45 tries to get the last one that I did for a specific project to work. And now I've distilled that down into a resource that you can download in the description uh, that will, you can just use this as a template or prompt so that, because you probably still won't get it on the first try, but let's get it to you. Let's get it working for you in, in, in five tries, right? Not 45. That's, that's uh you know, that's what I'm uh, over here doing, trying to uh, trailblaze some, some new ways to, to utilize these, um, these methods of AI. So, okay, let's go ahead and let's dive in. What we're going to do here is we're going to see our demonstration in the bubble editor where we're going to pass some data um, 
from bubble, skip, bubble to the JavaScript and then back. We'll configure some plugin elements and then we'll take a look at the prompt that we're going to use and um, see, you know, we'll see this generated, this code generated live and get used. All right, let's take a look at our demo setup here. So I'm just going to share the, uh, it's a very basic example of what we have going on here. What we're looking to do is we're looking to take this string, this string, this string, a list of them, and this one, this one, this one, we'll do something very similar, or sorry, sim simple. And we'll just take this string and add it with this number. And this one and this one, we can say, let's make this a grocery list, right? This will be milk, bread, and eggs. This will be a dollar, two dollars, four dollars. And the output that we want is uh, a final transform list where the JavaScript takes the uh, first item and the first price and like puts those into one thing. So I know that this is a, it means nothing in your world for what it is that you're looking to have accomplished. But what it does mean is that pay attention to this, pay attention to the format in which the data is being fed into the JavaScript, because that is your world. You'll need to um, do what is necessary to get the data input into the system. So that's what we're demonstrating here. Um, obviously, like I'm going to explain what's going on on the page because, you know, this is a demo example. And if you can understand it, then all the better. Um, but, you know, take what it is and uh, um, see how you would fit in your world. And I'll continue to point out the uh, similarities in the structure of what's being done with this example and the structure of what you'd be doing in your world. Okay, so that being said, um, let's take a look at these two workflows. Well, actually, it's only one workflow so far. All this is doing is this is setting up a list because, um, again, we'll, we're looking at this bubble data input. Um, okay, so let's let's go let's go now and do the steps that you'll do. So you'll have your own data configuration. You'll have your own data set up. There's stuff that you're trying to get in from the this data into the javascript what do you do uh what do you do so you head over to plugins and you look for the toolbox plugin and it's already installed on mine but go ahead and install it on yours then on your page you want to go down and do a search for javascript to bubble so javascript to bubble i'm just going to drop that in here at the bottom not that not a button Okay, so JavaScript to bubble, I'm gonna say make it last. And there we go. All right, so it's on the page, everything's fine. What we need to do here, there's a few things that we're gonna have out of the box as a setup. We're gonna type in the letter A here. We're gonna check these two boxes, trigger event and publish value. We're gonna check multiple outputs. And then this is uh, where we get into, let's see, output one set as yes, no. By default, if you're going to follow the method presented in this video, just set this because this is a, it was it successful or not. Next. Um, actually, before we, before we come back to this, because we are now, we've configured this. This is configured for how it needs to be configured. But the one thing that it's lacking is what are we doing with this data output? However, let's just take, take this more in a, in a logical uh, flow where we're going to go from input to output for our data stuff here. Because if we look back here, what we're doing, uh, we've actually, we're, we're correctly configuring the two plugin items. We've, you know, configured this one here because it needs all of this stuff set up this particular way. And then next for this one here, we're going to add a, a workflow here and we're going to look for this run JavaScript. So this is the second one. We're going to uncheck asynchronous and this is where our script goes. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we uh, are have an environment that supports the code that you get back from an AI tool so that it actually can, you can use it. You can actually make use of, of this stuff, right? So um, now what we have here is we have a, an initial list on this and we have an initial list two here. This is a list of text. This is a list of numbers. And what we're gonna do actually is I'm gonna go ahead and this is run JavaScript. You can see in the top left. Uh, and I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this because the tool will be able to see and read this. It'll also let it know properties.param1. It can uh, infer and, and know about this because um, it, uh, it it's smart like that. And then next up, uh, so this is, let's see, when we look back at here, our bubble, our data input, what you need to concern yourself with, again, in your world here, super simple example, right? This input, 
up here, bread, milk, eggs, one, two, four, or something. We're just going to combine these, these ones, these ones, and these ones. That's our processing. But in your world, what is it that you are going to send off to bubble? And let's, let's pause here and let's reflect on what options are made available to us here. Number one, five parameters as single value, uh, variables, five list of parameters. That is what you're working with. That is the, that, you know, encompasses the, uh, the world in which we're, uh, operating as it relates to this stuff. Okay. So that is kind of the set. That is the setup there. The next thing we're going to do is going to add a pause. If it's really simple stuff, you know, processing, you know, doesn't need to be a big pause. And then we're going to use this thing called DQ to JavaScript. It's going to automatically select this. And this is, you've now completed this correctly configure the two plugin items. And we've also learned to pass data from bubble to JavaScript and back. Let's review this just because uh, in your world, all this stuff's got to be, all this stuff's got to be exactly right uh, to make it work. So from bubble to JavaScript, let's die. Let's break that down from bubble to JavaScript. Well, from bubble here, that's this list and this list, which I'm going to enter in here. This is makes up list one. This makes up list two of our example, but in your world, what data do you have? Okay. So that is where this goes. Then we broke it down bubble to JavaScript. Now JavaScript and back to bubble. That is this DQ here. Actually, there's one other step. I'm glad we're taking our time here. Brings it back to this thing. And then over in this thing, we got the configuration correct here with this stuff. And then the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as, well, this is gonna be a text output. We're going to say, show the documentation. We're going to put that basically at the bottom of stuff. And then we're going to grab this entire thing. And we're also going to send that off to, to the JavaScript. Okay. So if you made it this far, congratulations, you have done all the setup. Now it's time for the magic. Let's go over to an AI tool where we are going to have it, uh, get set up. So I've got a prompt that's kind of already here. I'm going to drop that in here. And then I also have, this is going to be, both of these are going to be made available in the description, but this is basically letting it know that you're, hey, tool, you are operating in the environment of it, the no-code tool bubble, and there's a bunch of configuration stuff. These things, this trigger event is checked, this publish value checked, those were those, there's multiple outputs, and that's all the configuration stuff that I mentioned. So we're going to take that, we're going to paste it. Then we're going to break down this, this prompt here. We're just letting you know who it is and what it's doing next. This is where you type in, what is it that you want it to do? So if we look back on here, what is it that we're doing now? Well, what needs to happen in our very simple case, we'll break it down, but in your world, think about how you would describe this and think about it at, you know, a very detailed level, detailed level. Okay, so create a piece of JavaScript that uses the input from the two list. List one is a list of text. List two is a list of numbers. Being very specific, we're telling it what it's dealing with. Um, it combines the, and then this is specific to this example. First item in list one, first item in list two. Second item in list one, second item in list two. And so on until the whole thing is done. Now, one thing that this is missing, which I'll, I'll be okay with, but I wanna point this out, what does it do when list one is an unequal number of list two? If list one was four items and list two was three items, what does it do? So you'll want to consider all of the angles around this. Okay. So the list will come into you in a comma separated format. That's pretty, you might, you, you know, if you, if you do something and it doesn't work, you might want to check if you have this uh, stated on here or not. Uh, but if you just copy and paste this and then just kind of, you know, work with it as a template, then, then you'll probably be pretty good. So it's going to output to a list of text into output list one, also attached to the screenshots for the setup. So that was, that's going to be these ones here. And then, you know, you saw, you saw how we, uh, how we grab these, uh, just now. And it has these properties param list one. I'm just going to, let's see. I'm going to make sure that that's mentioned. Yes, it is available in the script. So 
Also attached are these, which contains the two input lists available as that. It's a good thing to just specifically stay state. Please give the script now. And like I mentioned before, after 45 tries to get a specific thing working for the world that I was in, I've condensed this down into something that should work. You know, I think the ideal case would be that it works in under five tries. But I think, you know, based on how simple this example is, here's our JavaScript. I've copied it. Let's head over here. Let's add it now. This is the magic. This is where the box happens. Also, make sure asynchronous is unchecked. It'll come default as checked. Boom. Next, let's run this. Oh, let's let's uh let's also take a look here. So, what I've got going here, got this piece of text. Let's go and add this. So this JavaScript, this is the one that holds it. Here's our output list one. So again, when we look back at here, we've covered our data input. We have our JavaScript transformation, our data output. And let's go, let's go do this now. Uh, our data output in this final list transform, that's where we expect to see our final result. And again, your in your world, I highly recommend setting up what is you're gonna do with a with a simple test. Get your feet wet like this. And so we're going to say eggs, milk, and bread. We're going to say one, two, and four. We're going to hit prepare lists. So here is the list one. Here is the list uh, two. These are what data I have in my world. It's going to get transformed, and we're going to see something get come back to us. So we're going to actually watch this in, in uh, slow-mo, process the list, run next. We can see this run JavaScript. Here are our two parameter things getting sent off to it. We're going to run next. It's going to take whatever came back. It's going to dequeue that, which means, boom, there it is. So we can see eggs one, milk two, bread four. Eggs one, milk two, bread four. So it processed that data for us. We made use of the AI code and we did it on the first time, first try, which is which is pretty amazing, uh, which, is, which just goes to show if you use the right uh, prompts, the right, um, you know, guide rails to help you as you enter this world into the world of AI for, uh, uh, you know, extending your abilities in bubble, then, you know, the sky's the limit, really. Uh, what can you do with, you know, the inputs and the outputs that we were shown? Remember, there's only five inputs and four outputs uh, on, on here. But if you can do, if you can work within that, you can build it. So there you have it, folks. We're going to do a recap here. And the recap is this, that what input or data do you have, if any? What do you want to have happen? Define that in uh, well-detailed English. And then what output does, uh, output data does Bubble get back? So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Check out other videos on the channel like Claude, connecting Claude to the API over to Bubble, connecting the ChatGTP API to Bubble. If you want to extend your app's abilities for your users to be able to use those tools, in addition to just using them like seen in this video, then check those out. Those are pretty fun as well. Thanks for watching.